Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you all about the latest from Secrets of the Moon, Black House, out May 8th on Prophecy Productions. This album has 9 tracks, 52 minutes in length, and this is the band's 7 full length studio album. This is a very interesting record. The first aspect of this record that I found extremely interesting is the fact that time, time is none of the essence. This album cannot be defined by time. This album, t time, as far as this album is concerned, becomes irrelevant. The moment you sit down to listen to this record, you realize that it's not about that. It's about the emotions, it's about the sound, and the journey that this record will take you on from the first to the last track. So you lose track of time, you don't realize how long the songs are, because everything becomes part of a much larger picture. And that larger picture is just the first layer of the record, because to me this album really has two layers, the overall big picture and then the individual tracks on the record itself. When you look at the big picture, it feels very concise. The album feels very fluid, very linear, concise, put together. Uh, the, the emotion that the record has becomes very leveled all the way across. It's not an album that offers a roller coaster rides of ups and downs, musically or emotionally. It's very steady all the way through. So it's a, it's a record that offers a sense of comfort the moment you're in and you feel like you're in that safe place all the way through. That is when you're looking from the outside and you're looking at the global picture that the record gives you. When you look at the second layer, which is the individual nine tracks, when you look at those songs, you realize that the album has a lot more to offer, that's a lot more dynamic, that's a lot more diverse. The way the songs are constructed, the, the structure of the songs itself, the dynamic changes within the songs, allow this album to have nine unique tracks. Perhaps the thing that holds it all together is the, is the emotional balance that the album has. I really feel like that, the overall atmosphere that it has, those two elements together, is really what keeps the album concise and together and allowing the record to have these two very different faces, the individual face and sound of each song and then the overall picture of the record. This allows the album to be dynamic and fluid and still feel concise and linear at the same time. The guitars on this record are phenomenal. To me, the guitars and vocals are the two main driving forces of this record. They determine where the album goes, they determine where the songs go, and they really determine the overall atmosphere, soundscapes, and emotions that the songs will give to the listener. The guitars on this album are phenomenal. The melodies, the riffs, the solos, everything surrounding the guitar work on this record is really splendid. Really crisp, really clear, really concise, delivered message understanding what the songs need, what kind of emotion they need, what kind of approach they need, using acoustic guitars, using uh, different transitions, different style solos, different bridges, everything surrounding the guitar work on this record is absolutely outstanding. Like I said, definitely one of the driving forces and one of the key elements of this album. They just give so much life, they give so much energy, and they complement the vocals extremely well. And the vocals is the second uh, element. I really like the vocals on this album. They deliver a, a dark but welcoming sound and welcoming message. I really like that aspect. And then when you combine how the guitars sound with how the vocals are delivery, uh, delivered, the two elements are absolutely in touch with each other. They're not moving parallel. They're moving in unison. They're moving together. They're intertwining throughout this record to really deliver a very strong emotional message from track to track. I also like what they've did as far as, as layers, as far as backing vocals. I felt that those were really important in order to give more substance to the tracks, in order to give more texture to the tracks, in order to give more volume without making the, al the album or the songs become heavier, uh, without distorting the message that the songs have, the emotional message that the songs have, by adding layers, by adding backing vocals, they were able to add a little bit more intensity, add a little bit more emotion without changing anything else around as far as the songs are concerned and, and as far as the overall feel that the record has to offer. So to me, everything surrounding the vocals and how they were approached, not only uh, in terms of the layers and backing vocals, but the vocals in general, was extremely well done on this record. And really, with the complement of the guitar work, the two, these two pieces became the core, the DNA, the spinal cord of this album. This is definitely an album that is also very well mixed and mastered. You could tell in the way it sounds. For a record like this that has, in my opinion, these two different layers, these two different approaches, the overall picture and then the individual picture uh, of the tracks, and that has great guitar work and great vocals, you need the album to be 
taken care of. You need to treat it as a baby, you need to nurture it. And to me, in the mixing and mastering of this album was that nurturing aspect that the record needed in order for the sound to be clear, to be crisp, to be concise, to really deliver the message that it needed to deliver, not only with the lyrics, but with the sound, with the emotion that the sound carries, with the emotion that the lyrics carry. So if the sound was not, if the work surrounding the sound on this record uh, surrounding putting the songs together was not done properly. I think you would lose the overall atmosphere that the album has that it, it's it, it's It's melted in into the DNA into the fabric of the songs into the fabric of the record And to me that comes from the mixing and mastering Extremely well done throughout the record really allowing the album to feel like a heart It has a heartbeat with every single song you feel that heart palpitating it, It's pumping blood. It's pumping energy throughout the record I got sucked into this album. I, I honestly thought going in that perhaps this is going to be an album that's not going to resonate with me. This is a genre that is not necessarily in my wheelhouse, but the beauty and melancholy that this album has as far as the sound and the vocals is concerned is absolutely captivating. You lose yourself in the album, you lose yourself in this record, you lose track of time, and like I said at the beginning, time becomes irrelevant with this record. As far as songs are concerned, I want to start off with Sanctum. This is the opening track on the album, and in my opinion, the perfect opening track. It gives you a glimpse of every single thing they're going to throw at you throughout the rest of the album. And to me, that is the perfect way to get started, because the moment you get through this song, nothing is really going to surprise you as far as elements are concerned. What's going to surprise you is how they're going to deliver them, because they change them around. But this song at least gives you an idea of what to expect, it gives you a sense of comfort. The opening riff, the riff is very melodic, very dark, and once the vocals come in, the song shifts into a darker, more stripped down sound and approach. It returns to the opening sound once the vocals drop out. So this is a, a, a start to this song that has this dynamic of dropping in, dropping out. Everything is determined by the vocals. The vocals determine where the song is going on an emotional level. The chorus has great melody, great layers to the vocals. It makes the vocals sound very haunting. The layers that they added, the backing vocals that they add, really made that specific part of the song, that chorus, feel bigger as far as volume is concerned, but also a little bit more haunting. Uh, the song that increases in intensity, the vocals, uh, the vocal at the end is just amazing. You, you just feel like the vocals are gaining sound, they're gaining presence. The song has such a great dynamic uh, motion. It really alternates momentums. It alternates changes between the verses and the chorus, feeling like the sound is dissipating and then the sound is coming back in again, expanding the track. So this is a song, like I said, it really has a little bit of a feel uh, of a heartbeat. It, it really feels like it's pumping blood the same way uh, it does throughout the, the rest of the album. So it's a song that works as a synopsis, gives you an idea, but it's a song that feels like a heartbeat. It just pumps in and it pumps out, it pumps in and pumps out. It just has this in and out feeling all the way through from the beginning all the way to the end. Such a magnificent track, s such a, an emotional track, and to me a, a very dynamic track all around with so many different elements changing uh, from the verses to the chorus, but it, then even within the chorus there is an, a feeling of unbalance uh, as, as far as the sound is concerned. Next, Cotard starts off with an acoustic guitar and I thought at the beginning they were just going to have this acoustic as part of the intro to the song and eventually this was going to change and the song would become uh, a lot more intense perhaps. That's not the case, they kept the acoustic the transition in into the vocals, but the song becomes a very stripped down song as far as the verses are concerned. It increases in volume once you move into the chorus, and then after the second chorus, the guitar sounds move into a completely different playing field. They just go, they go where the song perhaps was not expected to go at all, and I really feel like it becomes more driven, the overall track becomes more driven. The vocal changes with the backing vocals really adds almost a psychedelic atmosphere to this track. There was a little bit of that in the sound, there was a little bit of, of that psychedelic glance or, or gaze, if you will, uh, in the sound of the guitars, but it becomes more predominant with the vocal layers and how they put the vocals together, seeming like they're far apart, coming back in again. I, I really like the nuances that the, they surround that surround the vocals on this specific song. The song at the end returns back to the chorus as it closes it off, and it closes it off with a more a little bit more intensity because the chorus is a lot more intense than the verses. So it closes off on a high note, if you will. But a song to me that that really has its key moment in the way the vocals are delivered throughout the track. 
knowing exactly when to change the style, when to change the approach, when to bring in some extra layers, some extra volume as far as vocals are concerned, because this song needed that. It had those emotional changes as far as the sound is concerned, and it needed something to balance that out. And to me, using those layers is an easy way to do it without changing the overall uh, dynamic and the overall structure or feel that the song has without making the song heavy, just creating a little bit more volume. Uh, last but not least, Mute God, one of my favorite songs on the record, very somber opening. The song changes in the chorus, becoming a lot brighter, uh, more melodic, bigger volume, bigger sound, if you will. The song is really made out of two different parts. You have the verses in the chorus, which is something that they do throughout this record really well, creating songs that have this clear divide. Some of them, the merger or the transition, if you will, is a lot more subtle. To me in this song, that transition is a lot more abrupt. So it makes the difference between the verses and chorus a lot more substantial. You can tell that difference a lot easier. The, the transition between the two being more abrupt creates more of a riff, more of a break between the two. After the second uh, chorus, you feel like the song explodes with energy. You just have this blast of energy coming into the track. Slowly, that energy starts to dissipate. It, it, with the vocal layers coming in, you can feel that, that dissipation. You can feel that sound getting stripped away. And the vocals start to feel a little bit different. They start to feel uh, almost, uh, not psychedelic, but they just start to feel like they're moving into empty space. It's a really strange dynamic as far as vocals are concerned, but it's, it's a strange dynamic that really works well with all the transitions that this track has had up to that point. And this is a song that in my opinion is very dynamic and it has almost a David Bowie style to it. When you listen to this song, and you listen to the way the song is structured and all the different dynamic changes that happen throughout the track and the vocal changes, the styles and how the vocals are coming at you and different, uh, delivered in a different way, uh, you really start to feel that you're listening to something out of David Bowie. It's a really creative, eclectic track that has a lot to offer to the listener. All right, guys, this is it. Secrets of the Moon with Black House once again out May 8th on Prophecy Productions. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.